Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina, and for today I've prepared a game between Dr. Zygbert Tarasch and Karl Eckhart, played in Nuremberg in 1889. This game will conclude our miniature week for the moment. Um, tomorrow you will get the chance to season up your Sunday, hopefully. I will be choosing an endgame or a study or an endgame study. I'm still not telling you, keeping it as a surprise, but... I really hope you guys are going to check out um, my YouTube video for tomorrow. Um, so I would like to make that announcement that I keep making for the past, uh, I don't know, four, four days or so. Uh, if you're around 2000 USCF and you have subscribed to my YouTube channel, therefore you're listening to this, please share this announcement with some of your other friends who might be interested in having their games analyzed. So what I'm, I want to do for next week is um, a thankful for my subscribers, a way to show how, how thankful I am for you to check out my videos and give me feedback on how I can improve. I would like to select some of the games that hopefully you will be sending me on this email address and uh, analyze them for everybody to see, but also um, you know, hopefully you will have a lot to learn from the video as well. So if you have a great game or if you uh, have a game that you feel that um, you would like to learn more about or you would like to have it analyzed, send it to me on this email address, voiceors at yahoo.com. You can find the address also in the description below. And um, I'm looking forward to all of your games. Share, subscribe anything you can to promote <laughs> me a little bit but also to have so much to learn uh, hopefully um, next week so um, this is my plan hopefully i'll have enough games Alrighty, guys so um, enough with the announcements let's start checking out this game and seeing why it is so important to know your openings and to know what plans you should be adopting in each opening that you're playing so dr tarash um is playing against the French and his own system with knight d2. This is called the Tarash system against the French. Knight f6, e5, knight d7. So far, so good, right? Um, so the idea, why is white playing knight d2 and not e5 in this position? Well, of course, e5 is the advanced variation. Everybody's familiar with that, I'm sure. c5, c3, you want to maintain this chain of pawns and um, show your space superiority with white but with 9d2 what you're doing is you're basically giving black the opportunity of trading in e4 and what you want to do is you want to take back with the knight have a nice central knight um you know and keep the pawn in the center whereas black doesn't have a pawn just yet and it's going to take him some time to break through the center with c5 or e5 so that's basically one of the ideas of course, some other moves that we have seen in this position are knight c3 in some of the other games. Um, and this basically has a similar idea. If you take an e4, I want to capture back with the knight. But with the knight in c3, we are allowing bishop b4 pin, right? And we can play some lines where uh, white is going to have to double his pawns on the c file, or allow that doubling, actually. And with the knight in d2, we're basically having the same idea, hoping that black would capture in d4. But we're not allowing this bishop b4 anymore because, you know, we always have c3. The problem with the knight in d2 is that we are closing our bishop from c1. So there are always advantages and disadvantages in every single position. Now, uh, black develops knight f6 in general um, here. Uh, of course, capture is another main line as well for black. But knight f6 has been played a lot as well. So the idea is... I'm putting more pressure in e4 to, to make you push e5 so that then I play knight d7 and then very important my plan is going to be eventually to break through this center with f6 this is something you all have to remember if you're playing the French this is one of the main ideas you have to open up that center you can't stand uh, allowing y to have so much space so this is the main idea, which is something that Carl Eckhart didn't seem to be very familiar with. Uh, and we'll see as we go along. And now white goes bishop d3, finish up the development. c5 first, c5 first. This is very typical for the French. 
we first break, uh, try to break uh, White's um, center with c5, forcing him to play c3 so that in case of any capture happens, c is going to the c pawn is going to capture back in d4, keeping very important this e5 pawn very strong and protected. Uh, Black normally goes knight c6, which uh, Eckhart did in this position, and now knight e2. Now, this is very important if you're playing with white, you should be familiar with this system as well. Why does white develop the knight in e2 and not in f3? I mean, come on, we, since we start playing chess, we learn this knight goes to f3, because from f3 it controls two central squares, very important central squares, and here it would defend two central pawns, you know, why would we, why would Tarash put it in, e, in um, e2? Well, the reason he puts it in e2 is that this knight from d2 is going to go to f3, and whenever this change in d4 is going to happen, this knight will go to c3. So it's kind of, it goes like, uh, you know, cross, like a cross, one in one direction, one in the other direction. That's why it's so important to be so uh, careful about our pieces and how to coordinate them, how to make sure that each piece is going to be developed on the best square so that it it goes beautifully with the development of the other pieces. So that is the reason why Dr. Tarash went for knight to e2 here. And of course, this line is so important these days, it's still played so much, so everybody is familiar with these ideas. Um, this knight e2 is, is a good plan for white. And um, compared to other French systems, um, it is very important to know that you normally, although of course this knight is going to come to c3, you do have to make this trade. c takes d4, c takes d4, and then you have to break the position with f6. Otherwise, just look at your knight in d7. You developed it in f6 to, to force white to play e5 for what? So that you get your knight in d7 and have no squares with it? I mean, yeah, you have b6, but then where are you going to go from there? That's why it's so important to figure out how you're going to develop your pieces and what your plan is. And this is something that Eckhart on those times had not realized. These days, of course, we are very familiar with this. F6 is the main line in this position for black. And uh, white is kind of unable to keep this, uh, this e5 pawn in the center. For example, if you play f4, black can just capture in e5 and with which pawn are you going to take back. You got to be careful that if you take with the f pawn, you can fall into this little trap. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and now queen h4, check knight. And you're losing a pawn. So you got to be very careful. Um, if you capture with the d pawn, then this file, this diagonal, sorry, has opened. So you have to be careful about some queen b6s at some point. I don't know what you want to do with your king. Knight c5 can happen here, and queen b6 possibly, and black has a nice play. So in general, after f6, white normally captures in f6, and here there are two possibilities for black uh, capturing with the queen or with the knight, mostly with the knight, and then um, now that the e5 square is weakened, white normally goes knight f3, brings the knight towards e5, and is going to play for the e5 square and the e6 weakness. Uh, but we also will try as much as we can to, to trade some pieces, make sure our bishop is going to get free. If we have the opportunity of maybe trading and playing e5, that would be great, but, you know, it's not very easy. But this position is very playable for black and is the main line. However, after knight e2, Eckhart went for the plan that we normally do in the French, queen b6, putting pressure in d4, just that here it's not that great, this, this move. The queen has to be close to the king, on the king side, and we're going to see why in a second. Knight f3, of course, we have to defend this pawn. Bishop e7, again, a bad approach for black in this position. Uh, French is not one type of opening where you are only thinking about how to develop your pieces and how to castle as soon as possible. French is more of a tricky opening. You can afford to keep your king more in the center as black because the position is closed. 
for white it is not as, as easy to attack the skin in the center as it would be so amazing if you would actually castle because just look at this bishop in d3 I mean this bishop just looks at h7 so if you castle short for example you're going to be in big big trouble and castle long is almost impossible with this bad bishop in c8 which is the problem of the defense for black so um, you know that you are not thinking as much as how to develop the pieces faster so as you can see when I choose openings I try to show you both sides so that you can learn the different uh, opportunities and the different uh, positions where you develop your pieces when you don't so here is one of the positions that you don't because the center is closed so in this position what you have to do is capturing d4 pawn captures back and then f6 white cannot play uh, sorry black cannot play without f6 without breaking the center and figuring out you know what how white is going to develop what is white going to do and white cannot afford to keep this pawn here as you can see is being attacked three times you can't play bishop f sorry not knight f4 but you can't play bishop f4 in this position because there's simply bishop b4 check and then what are you going to do are, you can come back are you going to play king f1 okay if you play king f1 i just take bishop c5 you have to be very careful of your position you can't really afford not to castle with white with white you kind of have to castle uh, now the f file is opened maybe there'll be problems you know so um definitely c takes d4 and f6 specifically f6 is the main main idea that black needs to do um Carl Eckhart, however, in this position, thought about finishing his development, and he went for bishop e7. So what happened here? Well, Castle, white is finishing the development and is attracting you to finish yours as well. And now you're going to see the superiority of this bishop in d3, and the problem that you have with black, that you didn't try to improve the position of your knight in d7 and open up the center. Now, um, Tarash went knight f4, a very good move in this position, keeping this e6 pawn attacked so that you cannot play f6 now because you're just going to lose the pawn. That is a little problem here for you. And uh, really, this position is so much better for white if you're just looking at the space, at the superiority of the bishop, at these two knights that are ready to come to attack, one there, one maybe h4, knight g5. The queen can come to c2 or maybe to h5, depending on what you're doing with this knight in f3. And black has a really big trouble developing his pieces. So some people tried in this position moving the rook, like rook e8. Um, but okay, we can also do rook e1 and, or queen d2 or something. Not d2, quite queen d2. Uh, sorry, queen c2, I meant. Um, maybe not directly, because then you can take a knight b4. But rook e1. Just rookie one, you know, um, um, if you take, of course, I take back. Um, it's not that simple to play f6. People have tried it, but um, not as successful, let's say. Although you have some ideas now. You move the rook to bring this knight to defend. Maybe black starts getting some play. But um, in this game, Eckhart went for knight d8, a very strange approach that is simply allowing white to start the attack and queen c2 a very good move by tarash bringing another piece to attack h7 and now what do you do how are you defending that um eckhart blundered he played f5 instead g6 was a better continuation but even so we can think of bishop e3 for example and try some b3 c4 maybe in this position because black's pieces are so badly placed what happened after f5, you might ha uh, ask? Well, we simply take, knight takes f6, and now pause the video and find the best move. Knight g5, black played g6 in this position, and after this capture, check, check, last move of the game, knight g6, threatening mate, and black resigned. What to do in this position? No more. Uh, possibilities to save the game instead maybe here instead of g6 knight e4 was possible but after this captures h6 they're simply check knight g6 and you're losing every single piece here and then rook in f8
I hope you like this. Stay tuned for more.